We're here on this uh, somewhat special Hammer Brothers video. Um, I've got Matt here. Say hi. Hello. And we have a friend with us, Liz. Say hello. hi. <laughs> and we are recording this uh, from a hotel room in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, near uh, just outside of Philly. Matt, why are we in Phoenixville? For the view. For the view, the view of beautiful the brick wall outside of the uh, the window. Yeah. We're here for the angry video game nerd premiere. Mm -hmm. That's the right. The East Coast premiere. Uh, yes, that's right. We uh, just a few hours ago got out of the uh, fourth, I believe, uh, public viewing of the AVGN film, and we're going to give our thoughts on this. Uh, minor spoiler warning. Depending on what we talk, this is very free. This is very off the cuff. So, um... Like yeah, we're all sitting here in our pajamas. Like our show. <laughs> yeah, like our show. Uh, we'll start, uh, we'll start with you, Matt. Uh, General, what did you think? We'll build on from there. Well, let's see. There was the nerd, mm -hmm. and then there was explosions, mm -hmm. and, and military, mm -hmm. and uh, cameos. Fantastic. Wow. Review over. Thanks for watching, guys. No, 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 no. No. Short and to the point. Yeah. Seriously, it covered... It covered a whole bunch of different genres mm -hmm. in one movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, it what the film was, and you got a very big taste of it from the trailer too. It's definitely what you see in the trailer is what you see in the film. Is that this is? I was thinking of it like sort of. It's like the film version of listening to a mashup, where you hear different songs of different genres put together, and that's that's what this is. You know, it's based on a lot of what James Rolfe loves. He loves aliens, so there's aliens. He loves robots, so there's robots. He loves kaiju, so there's big giant monsters in it. You know, there's there's zombies, there's a bit of horror, there's a bit of intrigue, military, uh, suspense, love thriller. Story. Even <laughs> even love story aspects. Right. And uh, kind of all of this thrown into a big, like, giant blender with the, uh, with the nerd character kind of being... The tying factor that puts uh, all of these together. Even if you're not a fan of the angry video game nerd or not really know who he is, I think you could watch this movie. It's and, what? And pretty much figure it out for yourself. Not to cut you off there, Matt. I mean, it would be watchable for somebody who is not familiar with James Rolfe and his work. But you also have to understand that he made this movie for us. Mm -hmm. He didn't make it for a wider audience viewing. So, with that being said, is that an outsider can definitely watch this movie and, and get the plot, like you said, but I don't think they'll get as much enjoyment out of it as someone who isn't familiar, familiar with ABGN and Cinemassacre. Well, you just wouldn't understand all the jokes. Yeah, I think... But that's 90% of the movie. Yeah, I think the opening, the very opening of the film establishes it right away who the angry video game nerd is and what he does. It's, right. It's in the plot of this movie very much established that he is, uh, the nerd is a man who makes internet videos, you know, and posts them to the uh, equivalent of YouTube in this video, the copyright free equivalent of YouTube. Just like game pods. And the reason that he does this is that he's trying to just tell people, tell the world, don't play these video games. I'm playing them to warn all of you to stay clear. Which is essentially, in a way, what happened in real life. Yeah. He he tells uh, people, really, don't play these games. Right. But, and actually, in a way, it drove up the prices of these bad <laughs> games. <laughs> or it flocked more people to mm -hmm. the games themselves, I'd say. I mean, there were a lot of games... Or eBay fluctuations. Like Castle, yeah, a lot of games like, say, Castlevania 2, and, and even much more obscure stuff, like say something really obscure like plumbers don't wear ties you know it uh people are starting to uh flock to now because they heard this guy on the internet or, or something about like, it or something like deadly towers or dr jekyll mr hyde yeah Master's quest Doc, before these games used to be cheap to find now the prices have raised a little bit just because of it being out there yeah i think the i think the point is who had heard of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde before some guy mm -hmm. sat down in front of a camera and told us it was god-awful. 
and ship covered. Mm, yeah, so that's what a lot of uh, a lot of a big point early point of the film is about, and as again as you saw in the trailer, a uh, uh, he kept getting requests from the people who are watching his videos. Uh, uh, angry nerd, we think your videos are great, but when are you going to review E.T., the worst video game of all time? See, I just like the fact that he just put out videos pertaining to games. I There was never, like, really one game I ever really wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. I just always looked forward to the next episode. Just the general content, mm -hmm. sure, absolutely. Because then again, because in that way... You get stuff that uh, you may have never heard of. Would you have ever requested Big Rigs Over the Road Racing? You'd never heard of it. No. So, over the course of the uh, of the film, uh, the nerd and something I mentioned going in, I was hoping that this was going to be a lot like, say, Wayne's World. In that, in the Wayne's where you had the Wayne's World skits, but then in the movie. Wayne and Garth leave the basement and you kind of see like the a little bit of the world around them and there's a lot a, a little bit of that in the uh, the AVGN film just enough for world building really yeah yeah you're introduced to uh, the character of Cooper who you see in the uh, who you see in the trailers in the early first look stuff he's like a fan who uh, is kind of helping the nerd and that's his name the whole way through by the way it's just just the nerd not herb <laughs> not herb you'll uh, you'll see that in the film uh, just helping uh, the nerd film and make videos kind of trying to be his manager of sorts and just like the question you asked James earlier is the movie canon with everything that's going on canon as can it can be? Yeah, yeah. I, I hope that I, I hope that Q and A question shows up online at some point. With as many people filming that Q and A, I'm sure we can find it. Hmm. Certainly. So it'll oh, probably be in next year on, on. It might be in next year on the movie <laughs> for all we know. Sweet. So the nerd is. Uh, Again, I keep going back to the trailer because I don't want to get too spoiler-heavy territory, but... Uh, it, it could happen. You've, I, I consider you guys warned. <laughs> okay, so... So, the nerd uh, travels... Look, look, look. If you, continued watch, if you continued listening to us talk after Alan already put the disclaimer at the vi beginning of the video that there's, there's spoilers in this, you got, they, nobody, you got nobody to blame but yourself mm, right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But also, I could be like an ass because the general public won't see this in about a month. I could say like the nerd dies. <laughs> they wouldn't know, right? <laughs> but the nerd doesn't die. He eats his own gun. It's pretty sad. Alan, you got to tell Stop. the people about the forty foot tall shit pickle that that ran through New York City. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So it's they didn't, everybody. Yeah, that's why uh, James didn't talk about that in any of the pre stuff at all because he wanted to surprise I mean, us. Uh, okay. And it was the nerd and the nostalgia critic. And two other people, and they found proton packs. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting off the rails here. None of none of that happened. So, so the Although nerd. That, actually, that sounds like a better movie, though. Mm. So, so the nerd. <laughs> it like uh, a so the nerd travels to, or rather, is kind of commissioned to, because there is a a company, a video game company, wanting to make E. T. Two, be based on the infamacy of the first game, and in, in kind of. E. Yes, we should. Oh, we should also mention yes, that. Yes, there in was a, some problems we, with uh, clearing. Yeah, we should. Yeah, uh, uh, James talks about it on, in this in the post film Q and A. But uh, in what's kind of a hilarious uh, uh, nod to copyright laws, the the game itself is referred to as E T, spelled E E E T E E, five E's. I was honestly too busy being entertained to notice that right away. <laughs> yeah, which is which is funny because this being a full uh, indie feature film, they didn't want, um, you know, just to have the names of games around like uh, uh, like in the AVGN episode. So this is kind of more like a, an almost an alternate reality nerd mm -hmm. in which he review you know, he talks about a game called Xenophobe, but it's not exactly... Xenophobe on NES. Well, it's like at the beginning of the movie where do, he actually has a job. Yeah. You know? It, yeah, his montage of working games. Working at Game Pots. I just can't get over that. <laughs> yeah, he's working at a GameStop knockoff. You know, having to... Uh, well, for having those who remember Electronics Boutique, it is a knockoff. <laughs> 
if you're looking for cameos in this movie, wow, there's a lot of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you see, uh, in the trailer you saw Andre the Black Nerd, who was telling, uh, telling uh, James about the E.T. landfill myth. Um, as far as it goes, some of the stuff you probably expected, you see uh, Pat the NES Punk is there, of of course, the nostalgia critic. You knew he was going to show Mike up Mattei. at some point. Mike Mattei and Kyle Justin. Uh, sure. Um, okay, <laughs> okay. I, I got to know uh, Matt's uh, thing about this. Because I think if you are a fan of the character of Keith Apicary, then you'll love his cameo. If you hate Keith Apicary, you'll love his cameo. I just don't like his work. I mm. don't... I. Nothing personal against the guy. I just don't find him funny. Yeah, well, that's that's a. I'm mi- not into that type of humor. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's a, uh, a video and a discussion for some other time. But but I I thought the cameo in the aspect of where where and what happens in the movie is funny. My he... favorite my favorite cameo had to have been probably Lloyd Kaufman. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, Uncle Lloyd in the tro- in the trauma office. Yeah, who we already saw in the hilarious Toxic Crusaders uh, video, <laughs> definitely shows up and says some. Some interesting stuff in the uh, uh, in the film itself, and you'll again you'll see where it happens uh, in the film. I wonder if we could get Lloyd Kaufman for our show. That would oh, just be great. Yeah, we got to be uh, uh, indie. Well, old game look for us. <laughs> I got to start somewhere. So, so the nerd is uh, is commissioned by a game company. Uh, Cockburn Industries. <laughs> yeah, nice logo. In case you were in case you were wondering what that was about in the trailer, if Alan, if Alan could find the logo, he might put it up on this video. <laughs> maybe. I, maybe. I, I, I I'm gonna say right now. I but know it, people. If you can think about what it is, it it's pretty much what you're thinking. <laughs> the, the the logo has a friggin' like Angry Bird on the side of it, which is funny. <laughs> Which I think also kind of drives the point home as to what kind of video game company Cockburn is. But they managed to make E. T. Two <laughs> freakier looking than the original. Yeah, yeah. So and because of the fact that they're making E. T. Two, everyone says that the nerd should finally review E. T. Right, because they're coming out with a sequel. Right, because if you follow, and that's the pretty nerd, much the premise. Yeah, right, right. Because if you if you follow the nerd in his videos closely. Wendy review uh, 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 Indiana Jones games right yeah. before Crystal Skull came out. Right before Michael Bay Transformers, he did uh, Mystery of Convoy. You know, so so it, it's a lot of there's kind of a lot of real life into it where the fans and he loves the fans to death, but there's also the people constantly asking him to do uh, these certain types of games. In a conga line, no less. And you and you learn the specific reasons as to why. Um, the nerd doesn't or has refused to review E.T. all these years. Uh, quite frankly, it is the single game that turned him right into what he is today. So, interesting it runs parallels to the actual uh, the actual E.T. landfill that got uh, dug up. and That's just a coincidence that it happened to be around the it, same time. It was a coincidence, and it also didn't derail his production at all, according to James. In fact, uh, they tried to get in contact with them, too. They tried to get in contact with Spielberg. <laughs> no, if you paid attention, <laughs> well, with they, they, they just figured they wouldn't have a shot. I thought it was Paramount that owned E.T. No, uh, no, 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 that was Universal, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, no, the makers of the documentary wanted to get in touch with James yeah. mm-hmm. and see if they wanted to be part of the doc and see if they wanted to be part of it. Yeah. So, so uh, while digging around in the desert, they say, you know, they get picked up by military surveillance saying, "Oh, we've got electronics in the back of the van. Oh, we are we are going to be looking for extraterrestrials." Un- unknown electronics because they were so old on the of the right. you know, old yeah. Atari right. games. Yeah. So, you know, uh, secrets lost in the desert. And uh, the character I, I remember his name. It was uh, uh, General Dark Onward. Do- yeah. Dark Onward. And I didn't even catch his name. That was that was his name and. He's a hilarious character. He is a mashup, or a, he's almost a caricature. He is a caricature of every power-hungry, warmongering general to have ever graced a movie screen. And you saw in the trailer, he's in a freaking 
a motorized wheelchair tri- uh, uh, tank with like treads. He blew his own legs off. And... Is uh, pretty amazing. And and you again, you also saw in the trailer he loses an arm at one point. Well, there's a so, metaphor for that too mm-hmm. that people like him wind up destroying themselves. Yeah, so it's it's interesting to see him. I think he's a hilarious character. Um, you you have the other the other two people helping him out on his journey, uh, uh, Cooper and the uh, uh, the female character's name. It was Mandy. Mandy, Mandy. Yes, uh, who uh, works for the video game company and is coaxing him to go to the desert to review the game. And Mandy's character is also interesting because she touches upon a very sensitive topic. Which is near and dear to my heart, which is I, gamer I, girls. I noticed some of your reactions during the other. Uh, I know the I was going to be pissed at her, and then it was revealed that Mandy, you know, Mandy's just wearing Mandy's wearing fake nerd glasses, and she she has an Atari T shirt on, but it's just to make the nerd and Cooper like her. Mm-hmm. And that really did piss me off. Mm. Now, that, do you feel that she was a became a better character by the end of the film? I think her character was better explained by the end of the film. She mm. didn't have much development. Well, at the beginning Besides, of the movie, you saw her in the office, you saw her in the board meeting to begin with. Yeah, yes. pitching pitching the game, pitching the idea. But there was enough suspension of disbelief to make you think maybe she was just wearing contacts or something of that matter. Mm-hmm. But again, and then there's also the point now it's like there's this chick pitching a Pitching whatever to CEOs, whatever, and then there's a girl in glasses. Okay, like I really didn't connect the two. So okay, until it was well, until she started talking about until Cooper started talking. Well, she, as soon as she made that phone call while they yes. were sleeping in the van at one point, you knew then that she was. Still oh yeah, no, I, I realized that way before, and then that's that's actually when I started to dislike her. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think her character is just better explained that yes. You know, she said she finally admits she's not a nerd. She loses the glasses, but she still winds up helping the nerd and Cooper because she likes them as people. Yeah, that was that was definitely a redeeming feature. Okay, okay. Well, she, I'd say she had a little more character development than I say uh, than Cooper did. I thought. Well, Cooper was there for in comic a com- relief. in a comic relief movie. He was there for the comic. He was relief. a fodder. A comic a relief, fodder. considering the main character is also comic relief. Yeah. Fodder. What he was. Sure, sure. Not that it, not that he was a bad character, but it just didn't make sense because you've never seen him in any nerd videos or well, anything like that. Before. It, it's explained in the one of the opening scenes where yeah. the where the nerd told, told, uh, tells Cooper while he's filming. He said, "Well, normally I do these by myself, but yeah. you know he appreciates the help." Yeah, Cooper basically is an overzealous fan of the nerd who graduates into actually knowing the nerd <laughs> in mm-hmm. real life. Yeah, sure, sure. It's kind of the aspect I kind of saw Cooper as the uh, the character who was inspired by the nerds' videos to do his own thing. And over the course of the movie, and in, in really, what's, in, you yeah. two wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Oh no, not at all. <laughs> over the course of the uh, the nerd movie, you you hear that that Cooper is helping him out and trying to do managing stuff, but he's also trying to do his own show, which. Is <laughs> terrible. Every character in the film admits it's his own show is terrible. Oh yeah. But he's starting off somewhere. And I don't know if that was maybe a knock to the legions of uh, nerd uh, imitators, or if it was praise to the people inspired to go do their own thing. Probably a little of both. Mm-hmm. Knowing James. Yeah. So, or you could just be knocking the irate gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Without he doesn't need to. All of us do it for him. Mm. I don't think I don't think uh, James has ever said one bad thing about that fellow. We we've all done it for him. <laughs> so, uh, which means uh, next week you'll see the IRA Gamer movie <laughs> filmed on, in a weekend. Filmed on a, filmed on on a, a lazy farm, on a farm or out in the woods. Uh, so even more limited release, just one theater. It's his basement. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, okay, let's let's uh. Knock over the easy target here. <laughs> the low hanging fruit. Oh, huh, okay. Alan? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we're we're in off track. So, so obviously there is in in true film fashion. There's misconceptions. You know, there's misunderstandings. So now the military is chasing them. And what is 
a kind of short and brief, but also really funny chase scene. Again, James likes vehicle chase scenes, and you get all the prerequisites. You get the, you get your uh, boxes, you get your uh, fruit stand, you get your uh, your Wilhelm scream. That was that was beautiful. <laughs> I almost turned to you and yelled Wilhelm. You, and, well, <laughs> you get you get you all get the, of those. You get the typical guys carrying glass windows, which is when funny. They're not supposed to be, which is funny because almost the resol- Marty the, res- the resolution of that, yeah, was something we didn't get until after the movie, saying, "Oh wait, that was a reference to something else." How it actually plays out. So that was funny, and there were uh, in that aspect, as Matt was saying earlier. Definitely a lot of jokes that you had to be a somewhat obsessive AVGN fan to pick everything out. Or an obsessive gamer. You know, uh, sign, yeah, signs in Las Vegas that uh, that advertise shit pickle the movie. Um, I get the joke with the pane of glass. Um, n- not one, but several references to the live action Ninja Turtle movies. Well, yeah, because uh, they actually had, well. E T in there, but E T was the voice of of uh, Robbie Rist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the voice of Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtle movies. Uh huh. Uh huh. Of which he already gave an interview talking about his experiences on uh, somewhere on YouTube. It was posted on Cinemasker the other day. So, yeah, and that that character, the uh, the animatronic alien that you saw in the trailers. That was... Interesting, an interesting character. That it was essentially some of the more uh, stranger aspects of uh, some of the stranger aspects of uh, okay. the nerd's pers- uh, James Rolfe's personality coming through. This this right. character, this alien character, is mostly a largely cliched one-liner spouting uh, alien. Right, and they, it's a practical effect, meaning the puppetry is obvious, and. That's actually one of the strengths of the movie is that you can tell this is a puppet. You can even you can see the strings even, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially at the end scene where the console is coming down and you can see the string. Yeah, I think that I think that was the point. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Like, and then the miniatures were painstakingly, lovingly made, but you can still tell they were miniatures. Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely a thing of he definitely wanted to make sure it looked like a car or a tank or a jet flying across a desert scene at the same time you're also very very aware that it's a little miniature being pulled along by a by a string and then your your heart breaks because he sets them on fire and you're like no keep that sell it on ebay <laughs> you can tell in a lot of scenes where the uh the monster you saw in the trailer uh stomping on very fake looking buildings but exploding into real flames as they happen what was it's, the name of that monster? Oh, uh, that that monster's Death name Watsits? was Death Watsits. So uh, the the kaiju monster hiding underneath Mount Fuji. <laughs> in, in, Why? In, Just because. In an extremely, extremely mind-bending and convoluted backstory. One, it's kind of comes out of nowhere. Cooper tells it during one point in the desert. It's kind of a moment that you you kind of take a step back for a moment and say, "What the fuck was all of that about?" It's definitely one of the the stranger out there parts of James Rolfe's uh, humor and his personality that comes through. And that's again not giving it away, but that uh, not giving it away, but that uh, kaiju bit is resolved in an equally bizarre fashion. <laughs> Which, again, comes out of nowhere and is also pretty hilarious. And there's no fourth wall in this movie whatsoever. In fact, at the end, when the ridiculous ending to the kaiju monster is resolved, uh, E.T. basically turns to us as the audience and says, I'm not going to explain yeah, that. Fuck, fuck it. it. What you just saw is what you saw. That's that's all you need to know. But Right. There are, there are a few very fine loose ends that don't get explained i'm still trying to wrap my head around what the hell the prophecy was in the first place well i think a lot of that is i believe was intentional right the best thing to me is at the end of the movie you do actually get an an uh, et video game review yep got it gotta say it it there gotta say it there were you going to get an et review again the interesting thing is because they really could it was an easter clear... egg after the uh, credits actually well during the credits because they really could not clear the rights 
to actually show the footage of of ET or talk about it, mm -hmm. and it's why it, why the game is is referred to as E E E T E E, but also all of the footage that you see is not the act. Well, it's not the actual Atari footage, but it's all drawn to look exactly like the Atari footage. Some some weird uh, circum. Uh, Copyright circumvention. We see that in the opening too, as James is playing a game that looks highly similar to Silver Surfer, but is not Silver Surfer. What's presented here again is kind of an alternate reality gaming history than what you see in the uh, in the AVGN videos. But though, the spirit is alive and well. Though. Definitely appreciate the fact they were able to clear the rights to use Rolling Rock in the film. Oh hell yeah! There's no generic film, generic green bottle of anything here. It's it's Rolling Rock, and even Rolling a couple, Rock and is even, everywhere. And even a couple of jokes uh, related to Rolling Rock, which are, again are pretty funny. It's, you know, it is a central part to the nerd character. And. It's it's a great movie. My 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 final thought really on it is is that even though Matt, I agree with Matt that anyone can just come and watch the movie and get the gist of it, it, it is really meant for the fans. So I think a lot of it will be esoteric to somebody who is really not familiar with any of this material. Oh sure sure. Maybe you wouldn't understand why a a certain character is dispatched the way they are. <laughs> In a in a tribute to a infamous movie, mm -hmm. you know you might not get some of that. You get the basic plot and the story right. and how everything goes together. I think it's still on that base level entertaining. Oh, very but entertaining! It's de you definitely have to be I think at I least annoyed some of the people in front of me. <laughs> you definitely have to be at least a, a a fan on some level to really fully appreciate and grasp what's going on in the mm -hmm. film. And the only other mild, mild criticism I have is that towards the end, it starts to feel a little... It starts to lag just a bit. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, James Rolfe was very aware of this. Why everything was kind of wrapped up as it was. Exactly. Yeah, it, it was, kind of does feel like the, the, everything leading up to the climax kind of stretched a bit. And, and even a joke involving doors... That kind of felt with that kind of stretched on for a bit. Right, it stretched just a little bit towards the end, and everyone was very aware. And it was starting to drag just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's I, if those are my main criticisms: the fact that it, it's it's meant it's not meant for a wide release audience, and that it's not it, it dragged a little bit, and the fact that you could tell that they were miniatures. If those are my only criticisms, then those are those go are, see the movie. Yeah, yeah those, those are those are those were legit jokes to make it look like you're they want you to know they were miniatures yeah exactly. and I that's think that's the joke and I think those were even like just minor those are minor nitpicks or lord knows there are people Cooper off a cliff and then all he comes and he's just holding his head as he comes around a cutscene from but around that's the oh wait, that's a joke I yes. know it was great yes if you happen to be a fan of uh, ninja sex parties music videos they the very obvious throwing a dummy off a cliff dressed like that character gag Still works to great effect here and was, is still just hilarious. They took it to an art form. They really did. So, you know, we're maybe much more kinder than other uh, people on the internet may be when they, put, when they put it out. But when we were fans. Uh, final thoughts, Matt? We drove over four hours to see this movie. You goddamn, I was the first person you, to say yes to this crazy yeah, trip. Yeah, you goddamn right. We pulled a four and a half hour road trip from... from uh, uh, one side of Pennsylvania to the other side of Pennsylvania. Parts unknown PA. Parts unknown PA. A, I, another worst kept secret for us. Yeah. And then the, well, something to do with a groundhog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I drove an and I drove an hour and forty five minutes to go from even deeper parts unknown PA to get up to let to to our place to, to your to yes. along. So we, yeah, you, we you went from one side of PA to the other. I went from the bottom up. Yeah. So we are. If we have put about. Nine over nine hours of driving into this thing. You've put more than that to see a two hours to see a close to two hour film. It was great uh, seeing uh, the people that actually showed up here tonight. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, guests that showed up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> James. Yes. Yeah, James was here. Mike was here. Uh, Kevin Finn was here. Kyle Justin was here. We got Bad, pictures. Bad Luck Booty showed up. Um, so. I'm going to say about 
roughly a month from now uh, will be the digital download version. By the end of the year will be the Blu-ray and DVD release. There are still tickets to a few more scant showings. If you can, if you can get in and see it, this is definitely this is worth it. This is definitely a film that needs to be seen in a crowd. I mean, I mean we a, saw it with today. a group of people. Group of we saw people. it today at the historic Colonial Theater where they filmed the Blob at. Mm -hmm. It's the a original, beautiful theater. The original with Steve McQueen. How mm -hmm. many movies, Matt? And we see a lot of movies. We do go out and see it. How many movies do you go to a theater and people are just laughing and cheering and clapping almost nearly every five minutes? I've only ever been to one, and that was a showing of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh -huh. well, maybe when we saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but there was only eight people. There was only eight people there. I thought that the, doesn't count. Before that, the livelier, most lively film I had seen was uh, Snakes on a Plane, and we were the only fucking people sitting in the theater. Mm. <laughs> so, definitely see this with a group of people. Uh, see the film. This is, what, eight years of, uh, of uh, James Rolfe's life of... Uh, poured into this. His everything, heart and soul is into this. Everything that he loves, everything he loves in cinema, pretty much thrown into one giant video game blender and and uh, and given out. But this film, I'll tell you what, we, we donated some money to the uh, Indiegogo for this. I don't feel like I've lost anything. No, no. I think this was, this was really fulfilling and... Um, he... You know, James James should get all the credit in the world. He's exactly. a, he's a very talented and fantastic filmmaker and Lord knows we've been huge fans of his work for a long time and this you're you're going to enjoy it. That's what I feel. I feel if you really didn't like this film at all, you're just a deeply cynical fuckface. That's what I think. So you're the IRA gamer basically. <laughs> yeah. So if you, yeah, if you can't see it in theaters, go ahead and support it. Get the digital, get the physical copy, get both. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we're not paid to say that either. Yeah. So I wish we were. <laughs> that'd be well, nice. Well, yeah, we'd happily accept the money. Yeah. So I'll I'll get this out of the way then at the end. Uh, we are the Hammer Brothers. I'm Alan Bish, and it's Matt Bish, and uh, we have a Let's Play channel, which hopefully you can maybe watch a couple of videos here, huh? That'd be nice. But subscribe. So yeah, oh yeah, we got to do that. Please, we got to hoard out. Please subscribe. Um, we don't do what a lot of other people do. I don't have a Twitter or a, or a Tumblr or a Reddit or games. anything. Games stuff. Okay. We accept donations. Okay, games. okay. Enough with the donations. Okay. You know, uh, find us on uh, on Facebook, and you know, if you like what you if you like what we do, give it a subscribe, maybe a like. If you don't, whatever. Life goes on. So. Yeah, they had to bully me into subscribing. <laughs> that is true. So, uh, that's about it for this. Um, I guess we'll, uh, we'll sign off then. All right, well, it was, it was great doing this with you guys. Uh, maybe hit me up on Skype sometime. We'll, we'll try it again. Yeah, we'll get some, some video game playing in. Sounds yeah, great. And on, an, and on that note, good night. Yes, good night. See ya.